Hey folks, if you're watching this guide, strap in, because the Oculus is generally considered to be the worst dungeon in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. Although some of the encounters in this dungeon are fairly simple, the Oculus features a dragon riding mechanic which can be really confusing if you're experiencing it for the first time. Finally, since this guide covers both difficulties, I'll be sure to mention whenever an ability is unique to the heroic version of the dungeon. With all of that being said, let's get into the Oculus. Upon entering the dungeon, you'll be placed on a large ring floating in the air. In order to reach the first boss, you'll have to loop around this ring and clear out all of the trash packs present. On this ring, you'll encounter multiple packs of Azur Laywhelps, but they are fairly weak and don't do anything outside of hitting the tank with an Arcane Bolt. The other two mobs you'll find are Azur Spellbinders and Azur Inquisitors. The Inquisitors have a frontal cleave that targets the tank, and they'll also periodically root nearby players for 4 seconds. The Spellbinders are a tad bit more dangerous, as they'll cast Arcane Volley, an AoE on your group, Magic Warp, a Dispellable debuff, which increases a player's mana costs by 200%, and Power Sap, which channels into a random player and reduces their damage dealt by 4% for every tick. The Spellbinders should obviously be your kill priority here, and you should kick Arcane Volley and Power Sap whenever possible. Once you've cleared out all of the packs in this first ring, you'll reach a portal which takes you straight to Dracos the Interrogator, who is the first boss of the instance. Dracos is an extremely easy boss. During the fight, he'll constantly summon little untargetable purple spheres which will randomly move around the room. After a few seconds, they'll explode and deal damage to anyone standing nearby. Obviously, you should move away from these, but it's made slightly more difficult due to Dracos' magic pull, which teleports the entire party directly on top of him. He'll cast this constantly throughout the fight, so your tank will need to spend most of the encounter dragging Dracos away from the spheres. Finally, Thundering Stomp is an AoE that hits nearby players and lightly boops them into the air. This doesn't deal much damage and the knockback is barely noticeable, but I figured I'd at least acknowledge that he has more than one ability. For real though, this boss is a joke, provided your tank doesn't stand completely still. After Dracos has fallen, three NPCs will appear from the nearby cages, and each one of them will offer you a different type of dragon to ride around on for the rest of the dungeon. Early on, these dragons basically serve as a form of transportation, because they aren't actually relevant for combat until the final boss. However, you should still take some time here to plan out your dragon comp for the final boss, as it'll mean you don't need to come all the way back here later on to swap your dragon type. Now, these dragons are fairly complicated, and since they play a major role in the final boss encounter, I'm going to take some time to fully explain their mechanics. For starters, the three different types of drakes are Ruby, Emerald, and Amber. A lot of people will just tell you that the Ruby Drake is for tanks, the Emerald Drake is for healers, and the Amber Drake is for DPS, and while this is technically true, it's a bit of an oversimplification. I like to use this description whenever I'm doing normal Oculus Pugs because it's a fast and easy way to explain the mechanic to people who haven't done the dungeon before. Also, the final boss on normal is extremely easy, and can basically be killed with any combination of dragons, so having an optimized comp for it doesn't really matter. While a comp of 1 Ruby, 1 Emerald, and 3 Amber can still work for Heroic, there are two better options that I would recommend. If you don't have much experience with the dungeon, the safest possible setup is 2 Ruby Drakes, 2 Emerald Drakes, and 1 Amber Drake. I'll explain why this is the safest option when we're discussing the strategy for Lay Guardian Aragos later on in the video. If your group is already somewhat used to the mechanics of the dragons, I would recommend swapping out 1 Emerald Drake for a second Amber Drake. Obviously, this is a bit more risky as you're losing one healer in exchange for another DPS, but once again, I'll explain why this might be worth it when talking about the final boss. Now that we've reviewed the best comps, it's important that you understand what each individual dragon does. Even if you only plan on riding one type, I still think it's important to know what abilities your party members have access to. The first ability Ruby Drakes come with is Searing Wrath, which is a chain lightning attack that bounces on up to five nearby targets. It's also notable that every time this ability bounces, its damage is increased by 50%. The second ability is Evasive Maneuvers, which goes hand in hand with a passive effect on the Ruby Drake called Evasive Charges. Every time you get hit by a spell or an auto attack, your dragon will generate one of these Evasive Charges, and Evasive Maneuvers will consume all of them and grant you a buff. While this buff is active, each incoming attack will consume one charge of Evasive Maneuvers and cause you to dodge the attack. Finally, once you've defeated the third boss of the dungeon, Mage Lord Aram, your Ruby Drake will gain access to the Martyr ability. While this is active, your Drake will effectively AoE taunt all nearby targets and cause any spells they cast to hit you instead of your allies. Generally speaking, you'll want to activate evasive maneuvers right after you cast this ability. The Emerald Drake's first ability is Leeching Poison, which is a dot that steals health from an enemy every 2 seconds for 12 seconds. 
This debuff can stack up to a total of three times, and each application will refresh the duration. The second ability is Touch of the Nightmare, and this consumes 30% of the Emerald Drake's health in order to deal heavy damage to an enemy target. This will also apply a debuff to the enemy, which reduces their damage dealt by 25% for 30 seconds. Since the ability only has a 10 second cooldown, it's possible for a single Emerald Drake to maintain a 100% uptime on this debuff. The third ability that the Emerald Drake unlocks after killing Mage Lord Aram is Dream Funnel, and this is a channel that transfers 5% of the caster's health every second into another friendly Drake. The channel will last for 10 seconds, so in total this ability can heal an ally for 50% of their maximum health. The Amber Drake's first ability is Shock Lance, which deals single target damage to an enemy and consumes all shock charges present on them in order to deal additional damage. What are shock charges, you may ask? Well, they're applied by the second ability called Stop Time. This will stun all nearby enemies for 10 seconds and apply 5 shock charges to each stunned enemy. And finally, the Amber Drake's third ability is Temporal Rift, which causes it to channel into an enemy for 10 seconds. While the channel is active, the enemy will take 100% increased damage, and for every 15,000 damage dealt by your allies, a shock charge will be generated on the target. Since this ability has no cooldown, it's possible for a single Amber Drake to have 100% uptime on the channel. Once again, I'll explain why the recommended comps actually work when we discuss the final boss of the dungeon. After you finish selecting your Drakes, your group should fly up to the next ring. You'll want to be careful to avoid the Azur Ring Guardians which patrol the skies around the Oculus. If you do get into combat with one, it's not a huge deal, as they don't do anything outside of blasting their current target with an Ice Beam. Once you've landed on the upper ring, everyone in your group should dismount, as the next few trash packs need to be fought on foot. In order to activate the next boss, Varro's Cloud Strider, you'll need to kill the 10 centrifuge constructs found on this layer of the Oculus. On the center ring, there are four packs in total, and each one contains a single centrifuge construct and a mixture of Ringlord Conjurers and Ringlord Sorceresses. The Constructs themselves are really simple, they don't really do anything outside of attacking the tank. The Conjurers are pretty basic too, as their ability is a buff cast on themselves which pulses light damage onto nearby players. This ability isn't really dangerous, but if you want, you can purge or spell steal it off. Lastly, the Ringlord Sorceresses should be your kill priority, as they'll cast both Blizzard and Flame Strike at your group. You should try to interrupt both of these casts while you focus them down. Once you've cleared out the center ring, you'll want to hop on your drakes and fly to the platforms floating nearby. Each of these two platforms will contain an additional three centrifuge constructs, and after you've cleared out both of them, you'll have killed off all ten constructs. At this point, Varro's Cloud Strider will activate, and you can fly over to his platform and begin the second boss encounter. Varro's has only two notable abilities, and as long as you're paying attention, you shouldn't end up dying to them. The first is called Energize Cores, which causes one quarter of the room to be blanketed with energy. If you stand inside of this, you'll take ticking damage, so obviously you should move away. The primary ability in this fight is called Arcane Beam, and it'll fixate a random player and chase after them. If any player moves within three yards of this beam, they'll begin to take heavy ticking damage. Ideally, if you get targeted by this, you should kite it out of the group so that nobody has to worry about being hit. However, if you're a greedy bastard like me, you can just kite it in a circle around the boss to avoid the beam while still maintaining full uptime. I'm not saying that you should do this, but it is an option as long as you don't care about the fact that your tank will probably end up hating you. All joking aside though, as long as everyone dodges these beams, the boss should be pretty simple. After Varos has fallen, you can mount up on your drakes and fly directly upward until you reach an island with Mage Lord Aran. He's the third boss of the dungeon, but you won't actually be fighting him just yet. Attacking him on one of these outer islands will cause him to summon a pack of phantasmal mobs and then teleport away to the following island. In total, there are three different packs of phantasmal mobs, and the order in which Mage Lord Aram summons them is random. One of the packs will contain a phantasmal air, fire, and water elemental. The air and fire mobs don't have any notable abilities, but the phantasmal water will cast a volley that should be interrupted. The next pack will contain a phantasmal naga, ogre, and murloc. The Murloc has no special abilities, and the Naga will just apply dots and roots to players at random. The kill priority in this pack should be the Ogre, as he will periodically stun the tank for 2 seconds. Finally, the pack of Phantasmal Beasts will contain a Wolf, a Mammoth, and a Cloud Scraper. The Wolf will just hit the tank, the Mammoth will do a light AoE to nearby targets, and the Cloud Scraper will cast Chain Lightning. You'll want to interrupt the Chain Lightning whenever possible and focus this mob first. After you've cleared out all three outer islands, Mage Lord Aram will teleport to the center ring so you can fly there and begin the third boss fight. 
Aram only has three different abilities, but each one of them can be extremely deadly if you don't handle it properly. For starters, he'll frequently cast Frostbomb at the tank, which deals damage to them and causes an Ice Patch to spawn at their location. These Ice Patches are massive, and while you're standing inside of one, you'll be slowed by quite a bit and take moderate ticking damage every few seconds. Additionally, on Heroic, the damage taken from the Ice Patch will ramp up if you stand inside of it for too long. Although you can just YOLO this mechanic and constantly kite your arm around the room, the tank can make things a lot easier by running away from the group and baiting the Ice Patch along the wall. It's a bit tricky to do this properly, and it's definitely not required, but it will make your group's life a bit easier. Aram's second ability is Time Bomb, which deals damage to a random player and applies a debuff to them. When this debuff expires after 6 seconds, it'll cause the player to explode and deal damage to anyone else within 10 yards. Obviously, if you get targeted by this, you should move away from your group. Aram's final ability is Empowered Arcane Explosion, and this will cause him to teleport to the center of the room and begin charging up a massive blast of damage. If you get hit by this, it'll one-shot you, but it is possible to completely avoid the attack by hiding behind one of these pillars. After he finishes his cast, Aram will teleport back to the platform and continue attacking the tank. Now that you've finished the third boss, your group should hop onto their dragons and fly up to the top of the oculus to engage Lay Guardian Aragos, the final boss of the dungeon. As previously mentioned, each of your dragons will gain a new ability at this point, and if you want a refresher on what all of them do, you can go back to the Drake Riding Explain timestamp in the video description. As for the final boss himself, before I discuss the recommended comps, I want to quickly run through his abilities, as it's pretty short and easy to explain. He has an attack which hits his current target, an attack which hits multiple targets, and an enrage which increases his damage dealt by 25% and his attack speed by 100%. On Heroic, he'll also periodically become immune to damage for 18 seconds and summon planar anomalies which chase after random players. These will pulse damage onto any players flying nearby, so during this phase, everyone in your group should just be running away. Finally, Aragos will periodically summon greater Laywalps to help him during the fight, and these adds don't really do anything outside of attacking the Drake with the highest threat. Since Aragos doesn't really have any special abilities that you actually need to play around, the fight can effectively be boiled down to three simple goals. Keep the Red Drakes alive through the boss's auto attacks, kill off any greater Laywalps that spawn, and, of course, kill off Aragos as quickly as possible. As previously mentioned, my two recommended comps are Double Red, Double Green, and One Amber, or Double Red, Double Amber, and One Green. In both cases, I think that taking two Red Dragons is a no-brainer. Their Searing Wrath ability is really good, as it allows them to deal only slightly less damage than the Amber Drakes, while completely obliterating any greater Laywalps that spawn. It's worth noting that since this ability will increase in damage by 50% every time it bounces, you'll always want to be targeting one of the greater Laywalps. This means that when the bounce finally hits Lay Guardian Aragos, it'll hit him for an even larger chunk of single target damage. In addition to all of this, having two Ruby Drakes will allow your group to effectively taunt swap on Aragos, making it nearly impossible for anyone to die. As for whether or not you take two Emerald Drakes or two Amber Drakes, it entirely depends on how comfortable your group is with the dungeon. If the Ruby Drake players are relatively new and aren't super comfortable tanking, it can help to have a second Emerald Drake to provide them with additional healing. That being said, if the Ruby Drakes are taunt swapping properly, a single Emerald Drake should be more than sufficient to keep everyone alive. When playing as the Emerald Drake, your job is pretty straightforward. You should always maintain Touch of the Nightmare on Aragos, and you should keep your Leeching Poison at 3 stacks. If one of the Red Drakes starts to get low in health, you can channel Dream Funnel into them, but if nobody is taking damage, you can throw out extra Touches of the Nightmare to help kill off the boss. Finally, the Amber Drakes are the ones that people tend to mess up the most. If the only thing you do while riding this dragon is spamming your first ability, you'll end up dealing less single target damage than a Ruby Drake doing the same thing. As an Amber Drake, most of your damage will actually come from your shock charges, and a large part of your role is buffing the damage dealt by the Ruby Drakes. If you're the only Amber Drake in your party, your entire job can be summarized as follows. Channel Temporal Rift into Lay Guardian Aragos, use Time Stop on cooldown, and cast a single Shock Lance the moment Temporal Rift finishes. This will detonate all of your shock charges, and you can immediately go back to channeling Temporal Rift. Ultimately, the damage amp from this ability will cause the boss to die much faster than if you just repeatedly spam Shock Lance. The reason I would recommend running two Amber Drakes is really simple. It allows the second Drake to detonate all of the shock charges while the other one is channeling Temporal Rift. Since these charges will do a massive amount of damage, having a second Amber Drake effectively allows you to double the output of these shock charges. 
If you do decide to run this comp, your Amber Drake player should discuss which one will be the Temporal Rift bot and which one will be spamming Shock Lance to detonate all of the charges. It's important to note that Temporal Rift does not stack, so it's a complete waste to have more than one Amber Drake channeling it at any given time. I should finally note that although I've just explained the most optimal way to kill Aragos, this is absolutely not required in order to kill him. Back in Original Wrath, I remember killing this boss with 5 Emerald Drakes just for shits and giggles. As long as everyone in your group actually understands the abilities of their chosen Drake, Aragos is a really easy boss. You'll only ever wipe on him if the tank and healer Drake have no idea what's going on and they get themselves killed early on into the fight. Unfortunately, this is a bit more common than you might think. But with that, we've covered everything you need to know in order to clear normal or heroic Oculus in Wrath of the Lich King Classic. If you want to learn more about the other dungeons present in Wrath Classic, I'd recommend checking out my Dungeon Guide playlist, which you can find linked in the description below. Also, as a final note, this is the last Wrath Dungeon Guide that I worked on, and the research, testing, script writing, and editing process took easily three times as long as the other guides. I personally believe that the end result was worth it, so if you did find this video helpful, I would be extremely appreciative if you could throw it a like, as that will help other people find it as well.